happy everybody's tuning in. And I'm so happy that I'm reaching a wider audience through here. I've been getting messages and comments and it's so awesome to be able to reach people and um, kind of let them know that you're not alone, that a lot of the changes that you may be going through right now, many of us have been going through them, and including myself. So yes, this is kind of just another little community here and just spreading the word of love, peace, joy, and compassion, okay? And today, what I really wanted to talk about is actually my own uh, spiritual gifts and how I came about into knowing them and understanding them. Uh, basically, what I am is what I what people call me, I guess, is, uh, I don't like to associate myself with, I'm this and I'm that. Um, that's a whole other subject on its own. But uh, basically, what people say that I am is, uh, I'm an empath. And basically, that what that is, is being uh, very sensitive to energy in a nutshell, right? But with that is actually um, being sensitive to, to, whoop, to just emotions and vibrations and spirits and angels and spirit guides and things like that. And knowing and understanding what it is the message that you're trying to get. So I've, I know that I've always had this since I was very little. Um, because I will always be so sensitive in whenever I see somebody else in distress that would always be really shocking to me um, and and I know there's millions and millions and millions of people that are like this as well and they don't have it developed and my gifts are constantly being developed I cannot say to myself that I am an expert in anything I just go with my intuition and the gifts that I have and um, and nothing is set in sorry nothing is set in stone. So basically, that's kind of what I do, and I don't want to just put myself as any expert, basically. Okay. And I remember when I was early twenties, early twenties. I think I've always had it, but when I was early twenties is when it really started to really kick in, and. This, now I now thinking about it, I realized this was kind of part of my life path for it to get really strong for me to become aware because I was a bartender back then and um, I used to drink a lot. I used to drink a lot. At one point I started drinking a lot and I wasn't, I wasn't drinking a lot only because I was a bartender. I was drinking a lot because I was going through a lot of changes. I was going through a lot of stuff and a lot of the stuff wasn't good. Those were some of my darkest moments in my life there and it just it wouldn't really stop. I would just try to cope with it by drinking, right? But what happened was is that that wasn't the only reason why I was drinking. I wasn't really drinking because of me. I was drinking because I was feeling other people and I guess you could say for many years but at that moment I was feeling a lot of other people's pain. I was feeling a lot of other people's emotions, but especially their pain. Um, that also has a lot to do with the fact that I was also vibrating lower. So when I was vibrating, yeah, when I was vibrating lower, I was picking up basically. You end up picking up the low vibrational feelings, and the feeling that I would pick up a lot is just other people's pain. As it turns out, I started actually drinking more. I would drink more because I wanted to have a good time and just turn it off. I couldn't find a way of turning it off. So I would drink more. So I was drunk a lot. <laughs> um, but anyway, and you, you gotta make fun of yourself, man. If you don't make fun of yourself, then you know, what's there to life then? Really, you gotta make fun of your own mistakes. So. I would drink a lot and I would just drink to turn it off. Now that I think about it, I realized that I was, you know, I was. this is only part of my own progression because without being a bartender, I wouldn't be where I am today. That's really it. So it, it, it's all, it was all kind of meant to happen. You always have a choice though. 
you know, do, a, do I want to drink or do I not want to drink? Do I want to get in the car with this person or do I not want to get in the car with this person? You always have a choice. But basically, I, I guess, you know, I did all the right and wrong choices to end up here. <laughs> so with that, later on, as I kept self-developing and I kept um, kind of in search of my own happiness, I got into hypotherapy, which I've talked about before. And I started meditating. But you see, meditation, it just it didn't just put me in a beautiful state of bliss and it made me more calm, which was really beautiful on its own. But it made me um, it just it made me more enlightened. It made me more enlightened and it made me understand that I that I do feel a little bit more and now that I'm in a better place, now it's like I feel this compassion for people because I I know that I've been there. So you use that. To help people, and then it, it, we realize, oh, this is how I want to be of service to people. Because back then, as I was being a bartender, I was exchanging energy, and I was I wasn't exchanging positive energy. I was changing a lot of negative energies, and I was also giving people poison. You have to understand that when you drink alcohol, you're drinking poison. Okay, and I'm not here trying to say, oh, don't drink alcohol because Jesus Christ says, you know, whatever. No, this is not. This is. I'm not trying to preach anybody. I'm just trying to, really trying to tell you the truth from this. When you drink alcohol, you're drinking poison. Guess what? I was not drink. I was not only drinking the poison. I was giving people poison. And then I'm becoming more and more aware of this. And then all of a sudden, I realized I want to be of service to people. Holy crap! I cannot continue to give people poison, especially when two hours later I would see them throwing up in front of my face, and they would be they would have to be escorted out. That to me became painful because it's like I understood their pain. I understood the fact that they got themselves to that point out of their own pain. So that was very, very shocking for me in a way. Very, oh my God, I, started, I would get anxiety behind the bar because I just knew, I just knew what was going on. And not only in that aspect, I, I knew so many other things. Uh, people's personal lives and things like that and I was just like holy crap like I don't think I can deal with this so eventually I stopped bartending and continued on my journey and um, as I became more enlightened and with time and all these things and became more just curious and all and everything that you have to do basically to develop um, I realized that I, I also had another another gift and which is clear cognizance which is to know the fact that you know and I always had it but I never really gave it any credit because I always thought it was common sense so what I would do even since I was little I would just know things and I would like I used to want to know facts as well but I wasn't so much on the facts kind of person I was more on the after the facts kind of person like if I knew a certain fact it was because da -da 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 -da. and people didn't know the because, but I, I was able to explain why this would be happening. Um, and anyway, I just, I just know that I would know a lot of things that people would be like, how did you know that? And I'm like, I don't know, isn't it, don't you know that, you know? And so with time, I, I started to understand that I have that as well. And, um, and another one that I, that is, I guess you could say is my newest one and um, no, actually that's not my newest one, my second newest one is clear audience. Clear audience, that means it's really when you hear spirits and you hear things like that. I hear like angel messages or my spirit guides or I hear um, and I hear my higher self. That is, um, that is basically being sensitive to sound. People that, people that are clear sentients, a lot of them are musicians. And, but they only develop it to the point that they're sensitive to the sound. And actually, well, they're, they're probably a lot more sensitive than they give themselves credit to. But they only they think that they're sensitive to the sound. Because if you're sensitive to sound, that means that you're using your creative uh, aspect of yourself, which is your true self. And with that, you, you get a bunch of other messages in between. So yes, they are using that. They're just not giving themselves <laughs> some credit there. But yes, I started hearing, I started, I would always have, sorry, I would always have a one-way conversation with myself. Sometime, like two years ago, I started I started having a two-way conversation with myself. 
And that's when I was like, what? Somebody's talking back to me. Okay, that's interesting. Is it me? You know? That's basically how it is. Because you don't hear it with your naked ear. You don't hear it with your physical ear. You hear it like inside your head. And the way you think that you hear it inside your head is that you know you're not thinking anything. All of a sudden, boom, something pops in your head. Like there is like a like a saying pops in your head. Um, that is that is them. That is either your guides, the universe, your angels, whatever. That is all them. Uh, another way of um, understanding this is when you have a song over and over in your head. Those are your guides. They're trying to get your attention. This was very hard for me to accept, folks. This was really hard for me to believe, in other words. The fact that I have a song in my head and they're trying to talk to me, yeah, that's really weird and hot and hard to believe, but it's true. <laughs> it's all true. And uh, after a while, when you start writing these things down, you start seeing the patterns. And that's when you realize it's true because there is some sort of communication pattern happening and you're not paying attention to it. So basically that's what happens. And with time, I've developed, um, moving on, and with time, I've developed a clair clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is when you see stuff. You can see it with your naked eye, or you can see it with your third eye, but um, I, see, I see both from my third eye and my naked eye, but I'm not like this crazy clairvoyant person. Actually, that is the lowest of my spiritual gifts. But I do see like vibration, I see energy sometimes, I've seen a spirit, I've seen my spirit guide, but I wasn't, oh, I was really relaxed when I saw it, but then the next day, it really freaked me out. And um, just to know that I saw that, and um, so I haven't seen them since. I haven't seen them since, but I know they're around me, they touch me, they hug me. Like, I understand it. I, I've seen, I guess you can see, I, when I see vibration and I see the energy, you can see it. You can, I've seen orbs, like, you can see that. They're, it's like they're showing up again because I'm being more and more open to it. So they've been showing up again, more orbs and things like that. And I love that because it's like a little bit more comforting. Um, but yes, I've developed all that. Now, I want to say real quick, like, I'm not, I'm not really different than you. The thing is, is that I just decided to work on it through meditation. That's it. But guess what? A lot of people think that, oh, what's the point if I'm not going to be psychic? What's the point? Actually, no. That's really important, actually. That can help you so much with your work, with your relationships, with the relationship with yourself. Understanding this, you have to understand that this is your own personal power. This is your own personal gifts. This is your birthright. And to claim that birthright back, what more do you want? Um, kids are born every day. Kids are born every day. More and more psychic. And all kids are born, first of all, all kids are born like, yeah, with their own gifts to the max. Haven't you ever seen a kid that is going like this? Like pointing or just like looking and then you're like, no, right here, Bobby. Right here, Lucy, right here. And it's like they're they're focusing themselves into this dimension by focusing on you. But guess what? They were just seeing, you know, probably their spirit guide, some angel, they're seeing your aura around you. Because all kids can see that, especially babies. So yes, it's very important. I mean there's people I know that there's people that are not psychics and they're mediums or they read their own tarot cards, or they meditate and get in touch with their higher self into understanding how to work different situations at their job, or understanding how to work different situations with people, or with, like with people in general in the grocery store, uh, when you're out shopping, it doesn't matter, your own personal relationships, oh my god, the list is endless, the list is endless in what you can do, and this is, I mean, this is just... It's not like about, oh, um, they're born that way or, or people, people are just, people just have gifts. Like, no, no, everybody can have it. But then there's this one really important thing. People are in their own journey. Everybody's in their own journey, which means that 
Some people are, you know, they are born to have these gifts a lot stronger. Some of the people are born for them to be dormant until they decide to want more out of life and awaken themselves up. And finally, you awaken those. But that was their own journey. You are in your own journey. Your mom, your dad, your father, everybody's in their own journey. We're not separate from each other. When you, when you actually start to feel more and more connected, because that's really what um, meditation kind of brings you. It brings you into this beautiful sense of peace and connection. And when you start to feel more and more connected with the world around you and with yourself, bam, you just start to know things and you just start to see things a little bit more clearly. You start to see the world just more, more clear with sound, with joy, with peace. So yeah, we are. this video is not only about my gifts, no, this video is about understanding that your gifts are the connection to everything, but you first have to allow it for it to happen. You first have to understand and allow that you want something more out of your life, okay? And I'm going to end it with that, guys. I love you all and thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you like this video and if you haven't noticed, yes. You probably have, never mind. I did dye my hair. I'll talk about it real quick because I think it's important. Not because of I dyed it, but it's because it's self-expression. It's self-expression. This is the throat chakra at its finest. Um, I've lately have been having problems with my throat chakra. And it is about self-expression, uh, speaking my own truth, being true to myself. And I went for it. I went for it. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time. I am so happy. I'm so pleased. And I know, and I'm sharing this because I know some of you are going through times where you feel like you cannot express yourself or you can't be who you are. You can. You have a choice. Go with your own truth, okay? Mwah. I love you all. Thank you so much. Have a good one, guys. Bye.